Okay guys, so I'm going to start the build of this new 100mm frame. This is the KT100 from Real ACC. This is a frame from Banggood, it's about 10 bucks. And I'm going to be doing this um, as my first multi-GP micro build. So I'm going to see how these um, perform under 2S because I'm going to build this basically under the specifications for multi-GP uh, 66mm propeller and 2S battery and under 150 grams. And this frame will take a two and a half inch propeller, so I'll be using the Rotorex 2535 propeller, probably in a four blade configuration. And just a quick overview of the parts I'm throwing into this. I'm going to be using the Emacs Femto all in one flight controller and uh, PDB. I'm using these uh, Racer Star 6 amp ESCs. And I'm going to be using these King Kong rotors. Um, from I got these in a while back here. I'm, uh, I haven't had a chance to use these. These are 1103. Let's see a focus. These are 1103 7800 kb motors. So for this build, I'm basically just going to uh, stop at certain points in the build and then show you my work. And it's just going to be pretty similar to the XPL 117 build because you'll have the motors here, you have ESCs on the arms. And a flight controller, and the, the the center stack is a lot smaller here, so um, we'll have to manage the small space available to us. So I'll talk about that during the build. Okay, guys, so this is what it looks like with the flight controller mounted and the ESCs and the motors. Um, some tips here on getting all of these components uh, in the, in here in the correct way. Uh, what I've done is I've run the motor wires under the. ESC here on top of the arm and back over and then I soldered them onto the little solder pads here for the motor wires and then I have some I had some heat shrink here some clear heat shrink that I put on before to secure all that and then I ran the signal power and ground wires to the pads here on the uh, Emacs Femto flight controller now I did mount the flight controller here with some uh, sticky foam and there's no actually no mounting screws for this size. I think this is a 16 by 16 um, flight controller. This frame is actually meant for a 20 by 20. You can see the whole pattern there. So it's actually meant for something like a Pico BLX. Uh, I just happen to be using the 6 amp ESCs and this flight controller because I happen to have these parts. I was going to use them in uh, something similar to this build, but uh, ended up uh, just going ahead and putting it in these in this build. I would normally uh, recommend going with, since it's a 20 by 20 uh, hole pattern for this frame, I would normally recommend uh, getting a 6 amp 4 in 1 ESC and then the Pico BLX for this uh, particular for this particular exact frame because it, it, it's designed for those components. I just wanted to use uh, the Femto and these uh, uh, 6 amp ESCs on the arms. This is probably going to be my last build with ESCs on the arms like this because uh, everything's so small and compact now and actually this probably adds a little bit more weight but we'll, we'll get to the weight measurements in a little bit. Now if you guys do decide to go with the Femto and the ESCs on the arms uh, I would suggest soldering on the signal wire first, that's the center one here and then uh, then doing uh, the, the power and the ground and you can see this is probably one of the most difficult uh, soldering jobs uh, that I've ever encountered uh, just because the, the, the pads are extremely tiny and uh, in fact I had I think on one of these it was on this one over here I actually bridged the power and the signal on this one so I had to redo it so what you got to do is when you when you actually get all of these wired make sure you use your multimeter and use the continuity test to make sure that you don't have any of these bridged like the power and the signal or the, the ground and the signal because they're so close together that uh, very likely to happen because this is such a tiny board and the pads are so tiny you got to be uh, very good at soldering so definitely if you're a newbie don't I don't recommend going this route for this particular build I'm just doing it because I happen to have these parts the uh, 6 uh, 6 amp 4 and 1 AC or the 10 amp 4 and 1 AC plus the Pico BLX would be a lot easier to build uh, like in my previous build with the uh, Tomoquaz Predator X if you want to look at that video uh, it'll give you an idea of how much easier that is. Now, the fact that I have the flight controller mounted like this in this configuration, I'm actually going to not end up using these metal standoffs that this frame came with. And instead, I opted to go with some of these nylon 
standoffs that I haven't had in a separate kit. Uh, I got a box of like a variety pack of uh, standoffs, and so I'll be able to lower the stack here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my receiver in here, and then there's going to be this little plate here that's going to go on top that's going to uh, hold the camera. I'm uh, not 100% sure if I'm going to stick with this little pod or not. I mean, I know it's there to protect it from crashes, um, but the camera angle isn't that much there, so I have to either uh, modify this somehow to get a more camera tilt, or maybe I will just use the top plate and maybe mount the camera in the front here or something like that to keep it very low profile. So I'll uh, figure that out and I'll show that to you in the next step. Now on this board, uh, there's going to be pads here for your your receiver and so this is uh, UART 3, uh, 5 volts and ground. This is where I'm going to be uh, attaching the pigtail for the FlySky FSA8S receiver. And then over here is another UART and this, over here I got these pre solders this, uh, uh, 5 volts here and that's ground and that'll be the pigtail for the uh, camera. I'm probably going to use the uh, Yushin VTX03 for this particular build. Okay so here it is with the receiver on the f top of the flight controller. I've got this little pigtail here that goes into the connector for the receiver. Got another pigtail right there that's going to connect to the uh, camera pod. Let me show you that. So I just have a uh, this is the camera pod. I just have a VTX03 down there at the bottom, and the camera just kind of sticks in there. I just have some uh, sticky foam on top of the camera barrel on top and bottom, and have a little bit of an angle there. Hopefully, that'll be enough. And then my camera uh, connector is back here, and it just goes right on top, like so. You just have to put some nuts on, and, and we're ready to go. So let me uh, finish that up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so here it is totally assembled and props on. I've got the uh, Rotorex 2535 props and you can see here uh, probably a millimeter of clearance between the prop and the standoff right there. But it, it spins freely, no problem. Uh, this 100 millimeter frame is probably the smallest frame uh, size that you're going to be able to find that will spin two and a half inch propellers so and this will be a pretty good candidate for the first uh, multi-gp build um, it's got 2s motors uh, the prop size is correct and it's going to be running on 2s so let's see how much it weighs i think it's about 50 i think it's about I'm guessing about 50 55 grams something like that so let's see here Okay, so it's a little bit more. It's about 60 grams. So I think that has to do with the extra screws here for the motor and these, these little uh, King Kong 1103 motors are a little bit heavier than the Racer Star 1103 motors. So you get the little heavier motors plus the screws. You get a little bit extra weight, 60 grams. So I'm thinking I'm using the 21 gram 2S battery. So it'll be about 81 grams all up um, with the battery. We'll see how it goes in the flight.